Welcome to the commentary for episode one. I'm Jared Emerson Johnson. I uh, did the music and sound and some of the voice direction for the whole season. I'm Marco Brezzo. I, I worked on choreography. I'm John Scro. I'm a technical director, although I'm not credited as that anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I did a bunch of models and effects and technical crap, I guess. All kinds of stuff. Hey, I'm Graham McDermott. I did a little bit of the uh, programming work. And you're hearing the incredible saxophone stylings of Jordan Wardlaw uh, on trumpet, Dale Gutridge, and Jesse Wickman on drums, my uh, troupe of incredible musicians. They do a really great job on some of this stuff. Yeah, they're, they're intensely good. Look at the bumpy wall. It's my little ode to the William Tell Overture there. It's just there for the first nice time in the gunshot. One or two seconds there. Don't scream this time. I got it. I got it. Hello? Leave Swiss cheese by the rat hole, or you'll never see your precious phone alive again. Jiminy Christmas. That's David Nolan uh, doing the voice of Sam. He, uh, for those who are fans of the Bone games, he's also the voice of Phone Bone. And uh, for episode one here, uh, Max is Andrew Chaikin, who is ironically phony bone in the bone games as well so uh, when we we're casting this um, they definitely gave the strongest reads for these characters um, and it was a, a trick to make sure that we could uh, get their voice get their voices far enough away from their characterizations for the bone games so that they wouldn't be recognizable as the same actors and they both did a great job and separate your bliss Hey, that's that personal color spectrum book. Self-help for the helplessly selfish. Perfect. I'll take two. There's everyone's favorite TV static. Have no fears. We originally thought we were just going to do a little bit of TV stuff, and then it turned out we had to do a lot more in every single episode, which is a pain in the ass. Uh -huh. it's just you two? Get, your first the, get your first little hint of the uh, hubeless emetics music Hold on, in that Watch TV. That little mini commercial. It's a terrorist, a Bosco. Terrorist. He looks normal here. He yeah. looks normal here. The only episode. He's an awesome character to work with. He's great to run around with shifty eye expressions and conspiracy theories. The, uh, the actor who plays who plays Bosco is named Joey Kamen. He's an incredible actor. And he, um, when, when he first came in, he uh, was reading through the script and saw the, all the stuff about Bosco being a conspiratorialist, and it turns out uh, Joey himself is a, is a huge conspiratorialist, and he he's totally into all the crazy black helicopter theories and everything. And it was uh, it was funny because he I was assuming that Brendan, one of the, you know one of the writers, uh, was also of that mindset since he you know since he'd written this character, and it was a little bit awkward uh, trying to explain that everybody just thought it was funny. <laughs> Joey was there like, yeah, man, yeah! <laughs> uh -oh. Comedy bathroom sounds. Uh oh, man, you gotta have the comedy bathroom. Yeah. Number one. yeah, we never get tired of bathroom jokes. Like yeah, we, we never get tired of Wizard. Yeah. He's definitely my favorite sort of <laughs> He seems, you know, in, in this episode, he's kind of the most off-putting of the three, in, in my opinion, but as the season goes on, I... I have a fondness for him. Yeah, he's... I don't know, he kind of seems like guy. the uh, the guy that gets picked on out of the three of them. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's also the least... He seems the most sane. His, all of his problems are physical. <laughs> While the others seem to be more emotionally damaged. <laughs> John, did you do the puddle effect? Oh yeah, it's my favorite part. <laughs> That's comedy. Uh, it's yeah. beautiful. Uh, I knew, actually, when scoring this scene, That's I knew that... Puddle. I knew that this was going to be a wonderful series. It's like the same puddle as the honey from you know, the uh, bone. <laughs> was it the honey from bone? <laughs> was it really? No, we used the same puddle. <laughs> the honey like from bone. So you're talking about whether you reuse anything here? No, oh, we never yeah. reuse. No, uh -uh. And the TV uh, outline there, the only time we actually used a model after episode two, we just switched to... Uh, oh, yeah. We didn't know what we were doing yet. The sound yeah. like the cracks on his head. Ooh. <laughs> it's just so brutal. <laughs> Bone crunching sounds in there. <laughs> this this was a real 
uh, difficult one. I remember we had a lot of problems with, with specs because he could move from spot to spot to spot. Yeah, Randy hated that. Yeah, it went crazy. When he was just laying there, you mean? No, no, when he trying to solve the puzzle because he could move right, from right. one spot to the next spot yeah, to the next two spot. two spots where he was spray painting. And make sure he was I never even thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> getting knocked out in the right place. Just kidding. One of the many ways in which Randy's oh, life was made more difficult than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Very commonly happened. <laughs> this uh, music I started to dub as the the effing with the soda poppers theme. Um, it comes back every time Sam and Max are doing something to wail on them or Oh, get them to break their Alcoholics Anonymous. There's, there's one of the few Max picks his butt and eats it, uh, animations. That's right. We didn't get to see Sybil. No, they didn't have her coming out of the door. That's all right. They'll play the game. Driving! No, I don't think you did mention that. I guess we'll just have to slow down by violently rear-ending other... This is a cool little intro that Jake put together. Uh, I really like the, uh, the camera work he did here. And this is, uh, this is a sequence that I did a little work on. I did a lot of work on. Mm -hmm. um, to uh, kind of put in a little action mini game uh, into, uh, into our kind of more adventure style game. Um, I guess Maximum uh, Chaos was the, uh, was kind of the idea. <laughs> Achieved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gratuitous jumps. Very successful. Yeah, you guys started yeah, to have the jumps. No one really even cared what the mechanic was, just as long as we had gratuitous jumps. Yeah. yeah. That's my only reason for ever playing Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> for the gratuitous <laughs> jumps. That's really seriously all I ever do. When yeah. I play that game. You should play Midnight Club then. Yeah. It's the same thing, except okay. none of the adventure crap. Just, yeah. just, this, this is my favorite part right here pulling over lawbreakers, or pseudo lawbreakers. Mm hmm. The uh, traffic in the background's nice. It's good that that keeps going. Did the car just appear out of nowhere? <laughs> what was that? No. It might have been no, a cut. It couldn't that be. Part, it's so long <laughs> it to get right, be. that exit uh, animation. Oh, nice. That was a world of pain. It's a Marco special. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that the monkey. The focal pole. You gotta do something crazy with the crazy monkey. <laughs> oh, and this is, this is a good cut scene. I... <laughs> the enormous mute Indian, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Daniel Herrera, another choreographer, worked on this scene. Um, a lot of work trying to get Jared's awesome music lined up with the animation to kind of hit the notes with Brady. I remember him working a lot on that and right. ended up with a really good job and very... Very cool sequence. Wow, evil plans really do work. Don't get too excited, stretch pants. It was very fun creating the music for a for a hack guy who just didn't really know what he was doing and kind of kind of sucked at playing it and <laughs> like kind of knew one tune and lots of diminished chords. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Gotta water yourself down for it. Yeah, that was great. Although it's pretty sweet swirl to organ. <laughs> Just to be universally loved, that's all. I'm glad we designed a villain with an organ. Like, yeah, that's perfect. Exactly. And chest hair. <laughs> and chest hair. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should sell sweet Brady Culture medallions mm. from the Telltale store. And chest hair. And, and chest, chest hair. hair. <laughs> Could be like a full chest, you know, like patch. <laughs> I don't know if we could sell the chest hair without a, uh, yeah, the fro. <laughs> the culture's clubhouse theme. I, ha I had the whole thing kind of in my head and little tidbits of it here and there. Do we get a chance to do the full thing? Oh, yeah. It's so great how he transitions to that kind of thoughtful, pleasant face and then back to the angry face. Yes. You know, <laughs> <kind of> random. <laughs> <laughs> It's like his his psychosis is visible in his facial expressions. Hey, that tickles. Become Here we go. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that it's video delivery man, not, not like dog. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Talk about video some delivery man. Where are we? The iconic Ooh, it's dream time. The yeah. dream sequence. That's not even. That's not even like a, a uh, profession. 
This is my little Twin Peaks moment with everything reversed in the music. <laughs> there goes the fish. We're just really trying to do everything just crazy. It's whatever we could pull off. Oh, hi, little buddy. The whole Max thing was a pain in the ass, though. Getting him to float in the air, then flip upside down, flip the whole room upside down. But it, it all worked out. Most people don't realize that the border is actually changing color, too, which is a, uh, whatever, what do you call it? Foreshadowing. It's yeah. foreshadowing Wasn't it a much later. Scene getting the, yeah, right, the right lip sync to play on the right character, too, in that scene? Yeah. With, with duplicates of the same character. This is a cutscene that I did. I tried to hit home kind of a uh, showdown, old western showdown kind of style, with it, as much as I could. I love that effect of, yeah, the, that's cool. of the beam on the... I was thinking Darth Vader uh, when he gets hit. It by is the very Darth nice. Yeah, yeah. The electricity is <laughs> also sort of them. Ghostbusters. Yeah. You know, hold yeah. them. Don't look at the trap. <laughs> yep. Remember the commands I taught you. So now. That was a fun shot. It was a great animation, so I wanted to do a nice camera angle to showcase it. Oh, there's the rope sack. Oh, the classic rope sack. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about the rope sack a little bit? <laughs> Another <laughs> case of reusing model. But not really. It's different from the phony rope sack from Cow Race. In the rigging or in the model? <laughs> Slightly different. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's, a, it's an all-purpose rope sack later used on, on Leonard. You know how I adore gratuitous violence. Where did that boxing glove come from? He always has his boxing right. glove, and don't ask where he keeps it. <laughs> keeps it in his butt. Hey. <laughs> we spunked up our rating. <laughs> hey, who's that? Hey! <laughs> this is the the debut voice performance of Brendan Q. Ferguson, uncredited. Awesome. <laughs> Another that guy looks familiar, though. Yeah. Unshaven. <laughs> he, he does, like, from somewhere. <laughs> All right, that is uh, episode one. Yeah. Max season one. <whistles> Hope you enjoy playing. Yeah. See ya.